Okay, now this is an important video for all new uh, Fuji XT owners. Not only people that are first time Fuji owners, but people that are already Fuji owners that have owned the XT1, X Pro 2. This is something you need to understand. It's going to seem complicated, but this has to do with specifics and uh, this is part and parcel to how the camera has better autofocus tracking uh, uh, than the Nikon D500 but you have to be specific with it because a lot of people pointed me to a couple videos one video the guy said in the video that it tracks as fast as a Nikon D5 and I think he's a Nikon shooter he may be a first time Fuji shooter he made a very honest mistake but I have to point out some really key important things here that you need to do now right now I'm in the menu in the autofocus menu here and I have focus area mode select autofocus mode select but also autofocus custom settings now what you can do normally is hold down the display back focus button for a couple seconds and this gives you the option to program these buttons to uh, the specific things that you want. Obviously you should program these buttons to the most important things that you use all the time. The things that you use least um, secondary importance, uh, assign those to the quick button here the Q button. That way you can just hit the Q button and make your selections and change them from there. So external buttons are uh, most important. And what I've done and what you need to do to get the maximum performance out of your autofocus continuous mode and if you're a first time Fuji user and uh, you know, you've been shooting Canon before, you've been shooting Nikon before, you have uh, a few specific things you need to understand. Right now I'm in autofocus mode. Here I am in a single point mode. Okay, where I have three 325 autofocus points to select you know I have an enormous and I can actually change uh, the size of them here using uh, my uh, rear command dial okay and I can also move it with my joystick instead of my menu button that's one thing okay understandable right okay go into multi mode here where it's going to do multiple point autofocus tracking but additionally so I need to choose the area. Now a mistake that someone else was making is that they were shooting cars zipping by and they should have had it in the widest area mode like this but instead they had it in the smallest area mode. So they were, and we have another point to address here, okay? So they had this selected when they should have had this selected, okay? another important point so we have to have the correct mode set we have single point zone and wide tracking okay you should have been using zone and you should have been using the widest area but additionally so we need to choose the correct AFC custom settings okay this is multi-purpose which actually takes priority over certain types of continuous autofocus tracking this is multi-purpose number two ignores obstacles and this is proven to work very well I've actually proven it to work very well there are many video examples online proving that this works very well like if you have a bicyclist coming in front of a stop sign or a trash can or a mailbox it will ignore those things and continue you to focus on uh, the moving object like a, run a runner a bicyclist whatnot here we go for accelerating and decelerating subjects right here you can see the tracking sensitivity is different the speed tracking sensitivity is di is different and uh, here is number four it uh, set for a suddenly appearing moving objects number five is for erratically moving objects that are accelerating and decelerating and six is a custom set where you can actually set your own custom AFC custom set so the important thing here too obviously we need to have as would be with the Canon or any Nikon the appropriate um, ISO so that we can have sufficient autofocus uh, uh, capability to grab it with the appropriate shutter speed so obviously that applies to any and every camera but additionally so with the Fuji now I've assigned these specific buttons for these high priority items um, I've chosen my mode button over here you can assign it to whatever button you want okay this is very important single point zone and wide tracking so if I'm gonna be shooting bicyclists or motorcyclists coming around the corner at a rally or something like that I'm gonna choose zone and then I'm gonna choose the appropriate zone 
excuse me, the appropriate area with my other function button. And this is the mistake that people were making. See, the mistake people were making is they just went immediately into zone autofocus tracking and then went on to continuous using the, 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 uh, the lever on the front of the camera, setting it to continuous autofocus. What someone did, and a lot of you people will do as a mistake, is that you will set continuous autofocus on the front of the camera right here on the dial. And then you will accurately set the camera to autofocus mode to multi, but then that's where you'll stop. Okay, you have two more steps that you need to do to get your autofocus tracking perfectly correct so that the camera knows what it what the heck it is that you intend to shoot and you need to set your AFC custom settings as I said these are really three high priority common usage things that I have set to external buttons okay you may want to stick some of them in the quick menu I choose to set these to external buttons so you need to set the appropriate AFC custom settings here okay gotta do that important and secondly you need to choose the appropriate area the autofocus area now if I have like say big old cars coming by or something like that I don't have enough uh, a phase and it's low light I may have correctly chosen the right autofocus mode which is zone and I may have chosen the correct AFC custom settings for accelerating and decelerating objects so I've got those two things set correctly and I have continuous autofocus set correctly but if I forget to set this correctly then I'm gonna have an issue with autofocus tracking so I've set my three parameters continuous autofocus tracking and I've set uh, my uh, mode uh, tracking correctly and I've set my um, uh, AFC custom settings correctly but I forgot excuse me let me go back out of this and go into zone but I forgot to set my area correctly okay so all of those things it's only going to take you a little while to learn how to do this. What you're doing with these different little subcategories of autofocus is you're teaching the camera, not teaching it, you're telling the camera specifically what it is you're trying to do. And this is one of the key parameters, part of obviously, for how the autofocus is blazingly fast and blazingly accurate because ultimately your key point is to get as many keepers as possible. You know, when you start tossing images due to the fact that they're out of focus, that's a problem. Them. And if you don't set these parameters correctly, it only take you a day to learn this. And I do suggest actually assigning these buttons. Like I said, you hold down the display back button for a few seconds, and what it will let you do is it will let you choose any one of these function buttons to whatever it is that you want to do. And that's what I chose. I actually chose this for my mode button, and I chose this for my AFC custom settings. Okay. And then I chose this for my area. Very, very important. So as soon as you get this camera, if you're going to go out there and just stick the camera on autofocus continuous and then it's just say, well, okay, now I need to set it into zone mode, you're only halfway there. So don't do that and then come complaining to me about the autofocus not being what I said it was. The autofocus is exactly what I said it was. The point is that you have to set these four things correctly. Okay? You have to set the zone correctly, the area correctly, the AFC correctly. It's not complicated. It is just being very specific with the camera to tell it what it is that you want it to do. Okay. Every camera is stupid. No matter how um, advanced the technology is, every camera is a stupid tool. You have to learn how to use that tool, and you're going to have to learn how to do this before you just rip this camera out of the box, charge the battery, and go out there on the streets and start, bam, you know, start taking a bunch of shots. Learn this first, okay? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a pizza. No. <laughs> I'll catch you later. This is a very important video, okay? Please learn these facts because they're necessary to get the maximum potential out of your Fuji X-T2, okay? Especially those that are new to Fuji, but even former Fuji users because former, you know, ordinary Fuji users didn't have these uh, custom settings before this uh, first appeared on this uh, Fuji X-T2, and they do work. They're not gimmicks. They are important, okay? Thanks. Bye.